Let's talk tax. What is the nature of taxation? Taxation is inherent in sovereignty. Inherent in sovereignty as an incident or attribute thereof, being essential to the existence of independent government. In relation to bullet number two, the right to tax exists apart from the constitution and is not expressly conferred by the people. Is the power of taxation granted by the constitution? The answer is no. It is not granted by the Constitution. In fact, the Constitution provides limitation. Kaya nga sabi natin, it exists apart from the Constitution. So, paano nag-exist yung power of taxation kung hindi yan granted ng Constitution? Anong basis? Mere existence of the state. When state exists, the power of taxation exists along with the existence of the state. Next, it is legislative in character. When we say legislative in character, the power of taxation is primarily exercised by the Congress. May the Congress delegate the power of taxation. Put the tie next bullet. Generally, not delegated to the executive or administrative departments. That's the general rule. So my exception na makikita tayo along the way. It is subject to constitutional and inherent limitations. It is the strongest of all the inherent powers of the government. Ano ba yung mga inherent powers of the government? Number one is the power of taxation. Number two is the police power. And number three is the power of eminent domain. So, yun yung tatlong powers, inherent powers of the government. Inherent, ha? inherent powers of the government. Hindi kagibun siyang technique. It is territorial in operations. So, yung taxation applies only within the Philippines. Hindi naman pwede itax yung ibang bansa. It is generally pecuniary in nature. So, paano ka nagbabayad ng tax? Money, no? Pera. Hindi naman pwedeng ibayad yung <laughs> property. No? Gcash na kayo, pwede. Um, ilagay mo yung property mo sa Gcash. Ibayad mo doon. Kung hindi ka makapagbayad ng pera, so ibenta mo yung property mo, then pwede ka makapagbayad. Or, si BIR mismo, ang kukuha ng property mo, ibibenta niya, and then i-apply yung payment, yung proceeds doon sa liability mo sa tax. So generally, pecuniary in nature. Elements of taxation. So when the three are present, the power of taxation exists. It is an enforced contribution from persons and properties. Kung voluntary, ay hindi yung taxation. Okay? Dapat enforced. It is imposed by the state by virtue of its sovereignty. So it is not imposed by individual or private person, but it is imposed by the state. At hindi lang basta-basta imposed by the state, dapat by virtue of its sovereignty. Next, it is levied for the support of the government. Government, ha? hindi private persons. Characteristics, cups. Uh, pag nagkakape ka, kailangan mo ng cup. Pag madaming kape, madaming cups. Ayan. Ano ba yung characteristics ng taxation? Comprehensive, unlimited, plenary, supreme. Comprehensive. It covers almost everything. Name it. Pwedeng itax. Persons. Mayroon tayong personal tax or the poll tax business. Mayroon kang business tax. Activities, professions, rights, and privileges. Lahat na yan. Pwede yung lagyan ng tax. Meron na po bang privacy tax? Ay, magkakapon. <laughs> Punta ka sa Congress ng privacy tax. I mean, lahat ng pwede mong maisip ay pwede nating taxan. No? Or in, sa isubject sa tax. Unlimited. It is so unlimited 
in force and searching an extent that courts is scarcely venture to declare that it is subject to any restriction restrictions except those that such rest in the discretion of the authority which exercises it. Unlimited in terms of amount, you can impose 50% income tax per day on, 80% income tax per day on. No? Eh, paano sir kung 100% income tax per day on? Communism na yun. Pero gano'n pa rin, no? The, the character, the characteristic is there. Pwede. Sa Pilipinas, hindi pwede. Kasi nga, mayroon tayong constitutional limitation. No? May limit. Nilagyan ng limit na hindi pwedeng oppressive yung taxation. But generally, tanggalin mo yung limitation sa constitution, it can impose any amount. Next, plenary. It is complete. Under the National Internal Revenue Code, the BIR may avail of certain remedies to ensure the collection of taxes. Taxes being the lifeblood of the government that should be collected without unnecessary hindrance. Every precaution must be taken not to duly, not to unduly suppress it. So when we say plenary, when we say complete, ito yung first step up to the last step. Ano meron? First step, meron kang legislation. Legislation of the taxes. And then, after na ma-legislate dyan, pupunta tayo sa imposition. Nag-complete ka ng tax. So, ba ngayon? Tax season. Di ba? April 15 ang deadline. Kaso, Sabad yung April 15, mamumove siya ng next working day. That, that is April 17. So, magbabayad sila. Mayroong collection. Eh, paano yung mga ayaw magbayad? Sabi nga natin, it is plenary. Mayroong remedy to ensure collection. So, hinahabol yung mga tax evaders. Next, supreme. It is supreme insofar as the selection of the subject of taxation is concerned. But it does not mean that it is superior to the other inherent powers of the state. Definition. The power of taxation or taxation is a process inherent in every state to exercise the power to exact enforced proportional contributions imposed upon persons, properties, or rights to raise revenues in order to defray the necessary and legitimate expenses of the government. And dyan rin yung purpose sa definition niya. And the purpose is in order to defray the necessary and legitimate expense of the government. The primary purpose of taxation is revenue raising. Why? To support the government. Paano may support yung government? Moral support? Pwede ba cheers na lang? Hindi pwede. <laughs> Kailangan mo ng pondo to provide funds or property. Kasi mo gagamitin yung funds or property. Okay? Binabayad sa mga empleyado, di ba? Pinapagawa ng mga kalsada. Baka saan yung mga yan, di ba? To promote the general welfare and protection of its citizens and to enable it to finance its multifarious activities. So yan yung primary purpose of taxation is revenue raising. Kailangan ng pondo. Saan mo gagamitin yung pondo? Primarily to promote the general welfare. Para sa mga tao, yung pondo. May mga, ha? Mga tao. Yan. Para sa mama mayan. Mayroong secondary purpose yung taxation. Now, napansin nila, pwede palang gamitin yung taxation sa regulatory purpose. Hindi lang sa pag-raise ng revenue. And that is the non-revenue or the special or regulatory or sumptuary purpose of taxation. Daming tawag. No? Taxes may be levied with a regulatory purpose to provide means for the rehabilitation and stabilization for a threatened industry which is affected with public interest as to be within the police power of the state. Example, COCO Levy Fund. Yung tax na punta sa special fund. Ginamit mo yung taxation. Pero, as a conduit 
of police power. Yung pala yun, no? Exercise. Anong primary, ang primary purpose niya is rehabilitation and stabilization of a threatened industry. Police power yun. Pero nag-partner yung police power at yung power of taxation. Tax and other forms of exactions. I-compare lang natin. Toll, special assessment, penalty, fee. Hindi yan tax. Okay? Iba ang tax. Kasi ang tax ay enforced contribution upon persons, properties, or rights. Um, yung toll, sum of money for the use of something. Duman ka sa NLEX, SLEX. Yan ang best example dyan. Eh, sa tax, kahit hindi ka duman ng NLEX o SLEX, nagbabayad ka. Enforced contribution yan. Ba't ka nagbabayad? Kasi mayroon kang pasok ka sa definition ng taxation ng income taxation. So, magbabayad ka ng, for example, nagkakot ka ng income. So, Mayroon kang income tax. Mayroon kang property. Real property. So magbabayad ka ng real property tax. Gamitin mo man o hindi mo gamitin yung real property mo. Ano ba tong special assessment? Special assessment o tinatawag din na special levy on lands. Iba pa yung real property tax. Tax yun. Real property tax. Ito, special levy on lands benefited by public works. So sa baryo nyo, yung bakanggay nagpa, nagpa, nagpagawa ng kalsada, dahil nagpagawa ng kalsada, tumaas yung value ng property sa lugar na yon Kasi nadadaanan na eh. Dahil tumaas yung value ng property, ayan, papasok na yung special levy on lands. Kasi yung lupa mo, as a private person or a private owner, ay benefited by public works. Penalty refers to any sanction. Fee is a special privilege. Ano ba example ng fee? Nag, dahil nagnegosyo ka, kailangan mong kumuha ng mayor's permit or business permit. Dahil ikaw is professional, hindi ka naman magbabayad ng mayor's permit, kundi magbabayad ka ng professional tax. Yan. Yung professional tax, hindi yun tax. Yun ay fee. In lieu of the mayor's per permit. Yun yung PTR. Kung makikita nyo dun sa signature ng mga CPAs, PTR number. Yun. Yun yung professional tax receipt number. 300 pesos yun. Tax is imposed to support the government, pero yung toll imposed as a payment. Hindi lang para sa government. Kundi para ma-recover ng private person or contractor na gumawa ng NLEX, SLEX, CALAX, Yan, T-Plex, S-Tex, yan, lahat yan. Para makikover niya yung kanyang cost. Special assessment is imposed because of increase in value of land. Penalty, kasi yan ay para sa punishment. Fee imposed for purposes of regulation. Hindi ka kumuha ng mayor's permit, ay di illegal yung business mo. Tax, generally unlimited in amount. Sabi nga natin sa characteristics of taxation, CUPS, C-U-P-S, yung Udon Unlimited. Parang ano lang, sangyupsal. Unlimited. <laughs> Toll depends on the cost kasi para ma-recover lang naman yung cost of the property. Special assessment depends on the benefits obtained. So may limit, no? Kasi magiging excessive kung sobra-sobra naman sa cost or sa benefits. Penalty should be reasonable, not oppressive fee should not unreasonably exceed the expenses of issuing the license and of supervision. Ano nga ba yung toll? is a sum of money for the use of something generally applied to the consideration which is paid for the use of a road, bridge, or the like of a public nature. Special assessment, a province, city, municipality, or the national government may impose a special levy on lands especially benefited by public works or improvements financed by it. License fee is a charge imposed under the police power for purposes of regulation. It is in the nature of a privilege of a permission or authority to do what is within its terms. So kaya pag hindi ka kumuha ng mayor's permit, illegal yung business mo. Okay? Kasi nga, yan ay special privilege or of a permission or 
authority. Yeah. Taxation and other inherent powers of the state. Nabanggitan natin kanina yan eh. Taxation, police power, and eminent domain. Ito, inherent powers of the state. Kasi sabi natin, these powers exist by virtue of mere existence of a state or of the state. Merong state, merong powers. So, paano ba natin masasabi na merong state? Baka mamaya magtayo ka ng sarili mong state sa bahay mo. Pwede ba yun? <laughs> Hindi. Kasi daw, state kung merong apat. Apat dapat. Ano? People, territory, government, and sovereignty. So, dapat meron kang people, territory, government, sovereignty. So, kung merong apat na yan, merong state. Kung merong state, merong power of taxation, police power, and eminent domain. Eh, ano ba yung mga yan? Taxation, enforced contribution. Parang nung elementary tayo, di ba? Merong class fund. <laughs> enforced contribution. Eh, paano po yung ano, napupunta sa class fund yung mga noisy. <laughs> yung binabayad ng noisy. Ay, hindi yung taxation. Yun ay penalty. Oh, <laughs> pwede mo sabihin, nasa police power yun, regulation, for purposes of regulation. Para walang maingay. Madami pa kayong maingay. Daming pera eh. <laughs> eminent domain, public use. Ano pa meron sa eminent domain? Expropriation. Ano po ba yung expropriation? May lupa ka. Kaso, plan plano ng government, gawing kalsada yan. Eh, lupa mo yun. Pwede bang kunin ng government yun? Pwede kunin ng government. Ha? Kung gusto niya gawing kalsada yan, lagyan ng skyway, skyway, at yung skyway, patungan pa ng skyway, pwede yon Paano kung kunin ng government yung property mo? Ano mangyayari sa'yo? Di ba bayaran ka ng government? So that is the power of eminent domain. Purpose, taxation to raise revenue. Police power, promote general welfare. Eminent domain, social justice. Scope ng taxation plenary comprehensive. Ng police power, broader in application, general power to make and implement laws. Sa eminent domain naman, merely a power to take private property for public use upon payment of just compensation. Anong benefits natin sa taxation? Adi yan, mga nakikita mong benefits. Ha? Mayroon dapat na nakikita mong benefits. Yung kalsada, yung LRT, MRT. Ha, sa kiwang hangin, ops, ano, protection and benefits from the government. So kasama dyan yung mga sundalo na nagme-maintain ng sovereignty natin. May mga polis dyan, di ba? Ano pa yung benefits na nakukuha natin sa government from the taxation? Yung sweldo ng, ano, ng mga professors na nagtuturo, di ba? <laughs> so yung sweldo nyo, sa, sa yung sweldo ng professors at empleyado sa PUP, Government Educational Institution, nagagaling yan sa tax Pera yan ng taong bayan. O, yan yung benefits nyo, no? So, kung natuto kayo, yan, may benefits na nakapag-aral kayo sa PUP, ng walang bayad. That is because of the power of taxation. So, sabihin natin lahat, salamat, taxation. Ngayon, papahirapan tayo ng subject na taxation. <laughs> oh, next, police power. Mayroong indirect benefits. No? Hindi mo matansya kung ano. Basta mayroong benefits. Yeah. <laughs> Eminent domain, the benefit is the market value of the property kasi nga, babayaran ka. Kung hindi kinuha yung property mo, eh, babayaran ka ng fair amount. Ano pa? As to the amount, taxation, no? limit, police power, commensurate to recover cost of regulation, license, necessary expenses. Sa MN domain naman, hindi nag impose ng amount. Nagbibigay pa nga. Okay. Object, all persons, property, and rights. Sa police power, all persons, property, and rights. Sa eminent domain, only a particular property yung pwedeng makuha. Sa authority ng taxation naman, national government or political subdivision. Anong authority? Sinong pwedeng mag impose National government. That's the general rule. About general rule? Meron po bang exception? Kasi, nasa national government, nasa state, yung inherent power of taxation. Nasa state. So, yung national government ang pwedeng mag-exercise ng power of taxation. So, sino sa national government? 
yung Congress. Ngayon, sa ating Constitution, the Constitution granted, o oh, ito na granted, granted our local government units like province, municipality, cities to exercise power of taxation. Ay, local taxation ang tawag natin doon. So yung political subdivision, pwede kayo mag-exercise ng taxation, pero yun ay granted by the Constitution. Uh, police power, ganun din, national government or political subdivision. So inherent power, nasa national government. Pero yung Constitution and implemented by the local government code, Yan, yung poli political subdivision ay nakakapag-exercise ng police power. Eminent domain, national government ang may inherent power, but it could be delegated to political subdivision, may be granted to public service companies like Manila Water, Maynila, Peralco, or public utilities. Effect sa so taxation become part of the public land, yung funds. Si binayad natin na tax, napupunta sa public fund. Sa so police power naman, restraint on the injurious use of property. Restraint. Ang best example ng police power na na-experience natin, probably, ay bawal lumabas. <laughs> Kung sa classroom may batas, <laughs> bawal lumabas, bawal lumabas. <laughs> Yun yung police power. There is a restraint. Kaya sinabi natin, yung benefit doon, indirect. Bakit? Hindi ka nagka-COVID. So kung lalabas ba ako, magka-COVID ako, hindi rin naman. So hindi mo hindi mo matantya, di ba? Kung na-benefit ka talaga nung restraint na yun. Yan yung police power. Exercise ng police power. Hindi ka makalabas nung 2020. Next eminent domain. Transfer of right to the property. Yan ang effect. Kanino na transfer? Hindi na punta sa government. From the private owner to the government. Taxation is the power of the state to demand from the members of society their proportionate share or contribution in the maintenance of the government. Police power is the power of the state to regulate liberty and property for the promotion of general welfare. Eminent domain is the power of the state to forcibly acquire private property upon payment of just compensation for some intended public use. Theory and basis of taxation. Tinatanong niyo siguro, Oo na, oo na, inherent power na nga yan. Eh bakit ba? Pwedeng mag-impose. Anong basis? O ito na nga yun. Lifeblood, yun. Taxes are the lifeblood of the government and so should be collected without unnecessary hindrance. Lifeblood of the government. Dati, ito yung tinatawag na blood money. Kasi dati, ano, yung mga sundalo pinapadala sa sa gera. Then pag na-occupy yung another place, di ba? Yayaman yung country na yun. So may sundalo na pinadala. O saan magagaling yung armas nun, di ba? Saan magagaling yung armor nila para manalo sila? E di kukunin sa mga citizens. Oh, magbayad kayo, blood money. Kasi mamamatay ito. Huwag <laughs> naman, huwag naman. Nak, nak. Mamamatay mga kalaban, yun. Kailangan namin ng armas, ng panalag. So, blood money. Taxes naman ngayon are the lifeblood of the government. Ngayon ang tanong, Is the government necessary? Is the government necessary? Answered by necessity theory. Yes, the power of taxation proceeds upon the theory the existence of government is a necessity. Kasi nagkumukubra ng tax government. Ha? Nakumulekta government. Sino gumagastos government? O ay kailangan ba natin ng government? And the answer is yes. Under necessity theory. The existence of a government is a necessity. Sa natin kailangan yung government, sinabi natin dito, taxation is a necessary burden to preserve the state's sovereignty and the means to give the citizenry. Nai-enjoy mo yung pagtitiktok mo dahil sa power of taxation. Paano? Meron kang army to resist an aggression kalmado ka dito sa loob. Pero dun sa boundary, Ayan, may nag-spray ng tubig dyan. Meron kang Navy to defend its shores from invasion, corps of civil servants to serve, public improvement designed for the enjoyment of the citizenry and those which come within the state's territory and facilitates and protection which a government is supposed to provide. 
kailangan mo ng government at yan yung mga example kung bakit kailangan mo ng government. We enjoy peace dito sa ating uh, lupang sinilangan kasi meron tayong protection and benefits from the government. And the government needs you para magbigay ng tax. So talaga. Ano naman yung benefits protection theory? So medyo modern version. Taxation is founded on the reciprocal duties of protection and support between the state and its inhabitant. I'll support you, you support me. Ah, parang girlfriend, boyfriend lang, no? Ano ang duty ng taxpayer? Magmahal. Ganon din yung government. Taxpayer, despite the natural reluctance to surrender part of one's hard-earned income to the taxing authorities, every person who is able to must contribute his share in the running of the government. Share mo, yun ang sabi. The government naman should respond in the form of tangible and intangible benefits to improve the lives of the people and enhance their moral and material values. Principles of sound tax system. Magandang tax system yan. Hindi maingay. <laughs> sound tax system. Pag maingay yung kotse mo, sound car. <laughs> yeah, right. Fiscal adequacy. Self-explanatory, no? Fiscal adequacy. Sufficient. Di ba? Sufficient. Yung collection mo, sufficient dun sa expenses ng government. Administrative feasibility. Naiintindihan, ibig sabihin, naiintindihan ng lahat ng mamamayan na dapat magbayad ng tax. Administrative feasibility. At nung naiintindihan nila, kaya nilang magbayad ng tax. Halimbawa na lang, yung National Internal Revenue Code, pwede ba siyang maintindihan na simpleng mamamayan? Tinatanong ko lang naman kayo. Halimbawa kayo, basahin nyo. Kailangan ko pa bang ituro yan? <laughs> Administrative feasibility. Can you follow? Yeah, the National Internal Revenue Code. O halimbawa naman, naintindihan mo na at gusto mong sundin. So magbabayad ka kayo ng tax. Noong unang panahon kasi, kailangan mong pumila. Ayun, 'di ba? Kailangan mong pumila ng pagkahaba-haba. Nag-extend sila mga 'di ba, five ang closing, no? Nag-extend sila mga 8, 8 PM, 9 PM. Eh gusto mo sana magbayad, kaso hindi ka makapagbayad sa haba ng pila. O administrative feasible ba 'yon? Eh ngayon, 'yan sa panahon ngayon, medyo madali na mag-comply, ha? Kumaganda na ang ating ano, administration. Halimbawa, magbabayad ka ng magfa-file magfa ka ng ng income tax return. Dati, pag magfa-file ka ng income tax return, pwede mong isulat. I-print mo yung form, sulat mo doon. Magko-compute ka pa. Kailangan mo ng calculator. Yung iba, nilagay yun sa Excel. Yung Excel yung magko-compute. Ngayon, mayroong EBIR form. Ay, pasok mo lang yung gross sales receipts mo. Pasok mo lang yung expenses mo. And then, automatic yung computation ng form. Hindi lang yun. Pag may mali ka, papagalitan ka pa ng EBR form. Kasi meron silang validation. No? Ito, hindi mo na ilagay. Hindi mo na click. Ayan. Ha? So, madali na palang mag-file ngayon ng tax return. Ipapasa mo lang yun. No? Submit. Click submit. And then papasok na yun sa system ng BIR, hintay mo yung email, yung confirmation nila. Medyo matagal, tumatagal din yan. Sir, gusto ko pong magbayad. Saan ako magbabayad? Pwede mong i-gcash. Pasok yan sa administrative feasibility. Each tax should be capable of uniform enforcement by government officials, convenient as to the time, place, and manner of payment. Magbayad ka ng hating gabi? Pwede. And not unduly burdensome upon or discouraging to business activity. Hindi burdensome, hindi natin alam. <laughs> Kasi yung iba, di ba may 8% tax na tayo ngayon, no? 8% tax. So baka hindi na yun burdensome or hindi discouraging. So, magbayad na ng income tax. Sa April 17, nagpo-promote pa na. Theoretical justice. O yung justice dito, theoretical lang. Ano? The whole of taxation shall be uniform and equitable. Uniform and equitable. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Uniform. Hindi ito yung sinusuot ng college para pakipakayas yung suot nila. No? Uniform yun. 
Ito, ibig sabihin, all subjects and objects similarly situated shall be treated alike both in privileges and liabilities. Sa pasok dyan yung classification. Hindi pwedeng lahat ng tao, lahat ng taxpayers, same treatment. Hindi ganun. Kundi yung subjects and objects similarly situated. So my classification ka. Equitable means that the tax imposition must be fair, just, reasonable, and proportionate to the taxpayer's ability to pay. Hindi naman, ma konti na nga yung kita mo, mas malaki pa yung tax mo dun sa mga mayayaman. Hindi naman pwede yun. So that is your theoretical justice. So these are the principles of sound tax system. Fiscal adequacy, administrative feasibility, and theoretical justice. Non-observance of the principles. Halimbawa, yung Congress nagpasa ng bagong tax law may hindi na comply. Void ba yung tax law? No. The non-observance of the above principles will not necessarily render the tax imposed invalid except to the extent those specific constitutional limitations are violated. Punta naman tayo sa inherent limitations. Pag sinabi natin inherent limitations, anong implications niya? Kasi sa limitations, may, may kundi constitutional limitations. Limitations, parang boundary yan. No? Boundary. So pag ang Congress nag-impose ng tax law, ng tax, at na-violate yung limitations, then such tax law could be considered void invalid or ineffective. Sabi mo, valid yung tax law. But you cannot enforce. Pwede ganon. Ha? Tingnan natin, isa isa. Public purpose. Ang purpose ng taxation is to raise revenues in order to defray the necessary and legitimate expenses of the government. So dapat, pag nag-impose ng tax, pupunta yan sa public fund. Hindi pwedeng ipagawa ng bahay ng mga politiko or ng any private person. Dapat pupunta sa public fund for public purpose, not private. Sa so, paano natin malalaman na public purpose yan? Duty test is the tax in furtherance of the duty of the state as a government to provide. Promotional, a promotion of general welfare test. Will the tax directly promote the welfare of the community in equal measure? Next, character of the direct object of expenditure. Is the public welfare ultimately benefited by the promotion of the direct object of the expenditure? Alimbawa, issue ba nung... May naglagay ng ano, puting buhangin sa ibabaw ng mga itim na buhangin <laughs> dyan sa may Manila Bay. Oh, may dolomite. Public purpose ba yun? Ay, tingnan natin. Duty test. For the rents of the duty of the state as a government. Hindi naman duty ng state yun. Na maglagay ka ng puting buhangin doon. Ang duty ng state ay linisin ha? yung Manila Bay. Promotion ba yun ng general welfare? May pinapasok nila dito eh. Di ba? Kasi COVID time ng ano na yun eh. O, pag naglagay ka dyan, yung mental health namin ng mga tao, maayos. Yeah, sige. Pinapasok din nila dito sa character of the direct object of the expenditure. Ilagay mo yan dyan, magiging tourist spot yan, magkakaroon dyan na madaming, uh, mag magkakaroon ng economic activity dyan, boom! Uh, may magkakaroon ng progress. So, promotion of the direct object of the expenditure. The public welfare ultimately, I will ultimately be benefited. Oh yeah, pinapasok nila yan sa second and third. Okay, inherently legislative, sinabi na natin yan kanina. The power of taxation is vested in Congress. At dahil na kay Congress yan, bawal mong ipasa. Except delegation to the president, delegation to Local government units, delegation to administrative agencies. Delegation to president. Kailan pwede? 
Ito ay fixing of the tariff. Fixing of the tariff. May kinalaman yan sa importation and exportation. ba? Diba? Kasi kailangan mabilisan yan. Yung tariff rates na yan. Eh, paano kung Congress pa yung gumagawa niyan? No, mayroon silang procedure na sinusunod. Naunahan ka na ng na napag-iwanan ka na ng ibang bansa in terms of economic activities. Hindi mo pa na-adjust yung tariff mo. So, matas yung tariff rates mo. Eh, sa iba sila papasok. Sa iba sila magninegosyo. Wala papasok na foreign investment. Wala mag-i-import. Yan. So, yan yung delegation to the president. So, may kinalaman lang sa tariff. Next. Delegation to local government units. Eh, Constitution ang nagsabi na ang LGU ay pwedeng mag-create ng own sources of revenue and to levy taxes, fees, and charges. No, subject to guidelines and limitations which Congress may provide. Next, delegation to administrative agencies. Aspects ng taxing process. Halimbawa, BIR, sila yung nangongolekta. Alam ka naman, Congress pa yung mangolekta. <laughs> sa Congress na ka magbabayad. O, oh, syempre. So, may aspect ng taxing process na administrative in nature. Hindi na legislative in nature. So, kaya naman, pinapasa na nila yan sa administrative body. For delegation to be constitutionally valid, the law must be complete in itself and must set forth sufficient standards. The powers which are not legislative include ano pa yung powers which are not legislative? Ibig sabihin, ito yung administrative dun sa taxation process na pwedeng madelegate. The power to value property for purposes of taxation, the power to assess and collect the taxes, and the power to perform any of the innumerable details of computation, appraisement, and adjustment, and the delegation of such details. Ano ba yung tax return? Diba? May mga detalye doon. Ay pati ba naman yun? Congress pa ang magdi-design. So, i-delegate na lang natin yan sa administrative body. But there are powers which cannot be delegated. The, the determination of the subject to be taxed. Kung income man yan, anong tax base, anong tax rate. The purpose of the tax, the amount of the rate of the tax, the manner, means, and agencies of collection, and the prescribing of the necessary rules with respect thereto. O baka naman sabihin nyo doon sa third bullet, eh di ba BIR lang naman ang mga Wrong. Kasi yung, yung custom duties, yun ay national tax din. Ha? At ang mga ngolekta ay yung Bureau of Customs. So si BOC, nang mga ngolekta rin ng isang national tax. Hmm. So hindi lang si BIR pala. Ano mga ngolekta? Nang national tax. Okay? Territorial. Ano ba yung sinabi natin territorial? A state may not tax property lying outside its borders or lay an, an excise or privilege tax upon the exercise or enjoyment of a right or privilege derived from the loss of another state and therein exercise and enjoy. Ano bang reason? Tax laws cannot operate beyond a state territorial limit and property outside one's jurisdiction does not receive any protection from the state. Sa first bullet, hindi kasi enforceable or hindi natin pwedeng ma-enforce ang tax law ng Philippines sa ibang bansa. Sige nga, paano? O ba? Hindi mo kaya. <laughs> so kung ayaw nila magbayad ng tax, may remedy ba ang government to collect the tax? Wala. Kung may remedy yan, hindi baka makapag-impose pa tayo ng tax. Di ba? Yung sa second bullet naman, ang basis kasi niyan ay the, ben the benefit protection theory. Eh, wala naman protection yung property outside the jurisdiction of the Philippines. So, hindi ka rin justified na mag-impose ng tax. Privity of relationship, a person may be taxed. Ito yung exception to the territorial application. A person may be taxed where there is between him and the taxing state a privity of the relationship justifying 
the levy. Kaya yung citizen's income may be taxed even if he resides abroad as the personal jurisdiction of his government over him remains. Kasi meron pa rin protection yan, yung citizen na yan ay meron pa rin protection. Anong ibig nating sabihin dyan? Yung mga OFW, yung mga non-resident alien, ay alien, non-resident citizen, mga immigrant, nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa. Alam nyo, yung income nila sa ibang bansa, pwede sanang itax ng government. Okay, but currently, yung income ng OFW, income ng mga uh, workers natin sa ibang bansa, yung income nila doon, sa ibang bansa, na nanggaling sa ibang bansa, hindi yun taxable sa Pilipinas. Ayan ang current rule, hindi yun taxable. Ang tanong, pwede ba? Pwede. Eh sir, nasa labas sila ng bansa eh. Territorial application, di ba? Territorial application. As an exception, privity of relationship. Eh, Pilipino ka eh. Meron tayong privity of relationship. Therefore, the Philippines can still impose income tax on income derived abroad by citizens. Kahit non-resident citizens. At sinasabi natin, pwede. Pero buti na lang, hindi ginagawa. Kasi exempt yon sa Pilipinas. Yung income abroad ng mga non-resident citizens. International committee. Ano yung committee? Means to respect accorded by nations to each other because they are sovereign equals. Thus, the property or income of a foreign state or government may not be the subject of taxation by another state. Reasons. In par, in parem non habit imperium. Sovereign equality among states. Walang lamangan. You cannot impose tax. Bakit? Pakas tayo eh. No? Friends, friends. <laughs> Hindi pwede. Equal style. Yan. Immunity from suit. mag ka ng tax sa ibang bansa, ayaw magbayad. Sue me, sabi ng ibang bansa. Eh hindi nga masu, Kasi nga, immunity from suit. Hindi sila pwedeng makasuhan without consent. Usage among states that when a foreign sovereign enters the territorial jurisdiction of another, There is an implied understanding that the former does not intend to degrade its dignity by placing itself under the jurisdiction of the other. Next, tax exemption of government entities, agencies, and instrumentalities. Exempt ba yung national government sa tax? Eh, di ba sir siya yung nag-impose? Eh, kaya nga. Paano kung kumita din siya? Detaxable din siya. Ay, ito ang sinasabi natin. No? Inherent limitation ay tax exemption nila. Unless otherwise provided by law, the exemption applies only to government entities through which the government immediately and directly exercises its sovereign powers. So in the exercise of sovereign power, in the exercise of government function, kung may kita, tax exempt yung income na yun. That is the general rule sa government entities. Now, with respect to government-owned controlled corporations performing proprietary, uh, not governmental functions, they are generally subject to tax unless expressly exempted by law. Example, no? um, yung metropolitan waters and sewerage system. Siyempre, performing yan ang government functions na meron yung regulatory office para dun sa mga uh, water concessioners. Kung kumita yan in the exercise of function, kung anong klaseng income yan, exempt yun kasi government functions. Eh, paano ko nagparenta ng office? Eh, hindi naman government function yun. Hindi niya government function ang magparenta ng office. That is proprietary function, private function. So yung rental income niya ay subject to tax unless expressly exempted by law. Or, ngayon, ang tanong, pwede bang itax ng government yung sarili niya? Pwede. 
kung gusto niya. <laughs> Kaya ko ba't naman niya gagawin? Kaya nga sabi dun sa first statement, unless otherwise provided by law, exempt ka naman. Pero kung gusto mong itaksa sa sarili mo, bahala ka. <laughs> Sige. Now, but with respect to government-owned or controlled corporations, taxation is the rule sa mga proprietary functions. Reason for the exemption, government will be taxing itself to raise money for itself. <laughs> Immunity is necessary in order that government functions will not be impeded. Ano? Constitutional limitations. Ano naman tong constitutional limitations? Limitations na mababasa natin sa constitution. Sa so, pakilabas ng constitution nyo, basahin nyo, makikita nyo tong mga limitations na to. First, Section 20, Article 3. No person shall be imprisoned for debt or non-payment of a poll tax. What is a poll tax? That is your community tax. What is a community tax? That is your cedula. Nagbabayad ka ba ng cedula? Hindi, di ba? O hindi ka pa nakukulong. Kasi nga, Section 20, Article 3. The whole of taxation shall be uniform and equitable. Nabanggit natin kanina. Congress shall evolve a progressive system of taxation. Grant by Congress of authority to the President to impose tariff rates. Prohibition against taxation of religious, charitable entities, and educational entities. Ito, itong prohibition na to, ito ay may kinalaman sa Real Property Tax Exemption. I'll explain natin later. Prohibition against taxation of non-stock, non-profit, educational institution. Ito naman may kinalaman sa exemption on income tax. Magkaiba po ba yung dalawang yan? Tax exemption yung isa. Tax, real property tax exemption ng religious, charitable entities, and educational institution. Sir, nabanggit ulit yung educational institution. Oo. Sa income tax naman yan. Exempt siya sa income tax and in certain donations. Next, majority vote of Congress for grant of tax exemption. Pag nag-impose ang Congress ng tax, simple, simple majority lang. Pero kung tax exemption na, majority vote of Congress. Ano kayo ba nun? Simple majority means majority of the quorum. Ano yung quorum? Quorum is majority, di ba? So, majority of the majority, yun yung pwedeng mag-impose ng tax. Pero, kung tax exemption, majority of the Congress, of the entire Congress, hindi ng quorum. Next, prohibition on use of tax levied for special purpose. May special purpose nga. This is a special purpose mo lang gagamitin. Pag na-comply na yung special purpose, then babalik siya sa, sa public fund. Sa, sa general fund. Next, President's veto power on appropriation, revenue, tariff bills. Anong meron dyan? Pag nagpasa ang Congress ng law to the President, kasi yun yung final, eh. kailangan ng permahan yan, no? ang President. Yung President, pwede niyang tanggihan yung law, o ang tawag natin doon, veto. Pero pag vinito niya yung isang law, the entire law, ang dapat mavito. So, hindi na magiging effective yung law na yun. Pero rejected na yung law. The entire law. So, pwede po bang isang provision lang? Ayaw na President yung Section 2. Hindi pwede. The entire law will be vetoed. But when it comes to appropriation, revenue, or tariff bills, when it comes to tax laws, ha? when it comes to tax laws, pwede magvito ang President ng specific line item or provision. Kaya yung sa create law or sa train law, kung mapapansin nyo, nababalita, mayroong veto message ng president. Na may specific provision, certain lines, na rejected ng president. So ano nangyari doon? Yung buong law ba ay na-reject? Hindi. Kasi special case. no? Pag appropriation, revenue, or tariff bill, the president may veto a specific line item. And the other items will not be affected. Next, non-impairment of jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. 
grant of power to the local government units to create its own sources of revenue. No appropriation or use of public money for religious purposes. Yeah, tingnan natin tong actually, directly, and exclusively. Ito yung kanina, no? Yung sa charitable, religious, and educational institution. Tatlo kasi yun eh. Real property tax exemption, income tax exemption, and exemptions on donations. So, anong meron doon? Tatlo rin yung requirements. Actually, directly, and exclusively. Actually, directly, and exclusively used for religious, charitable, or educational purposes shall be exempt from taxation. Anong klaseng taxation? Kasi hindi sinabi. Sabi ng Supreme Court, that refers to real property tax exemption. Kasi pag binasa mo daw, Charitable institutions, churches, and personages or convents appurtenance thereto, mosques, non-profit cemeteries, and all lands, buildings, and improvements. So sabi ng Supreme Court, eh, referring yan sa real property. So real property, actually, directly, and exclusively used for religious, charitable, or educational purposes, shall be exempt from real property tax. Malinaw. Tatlo ha. Kinamit mo sa religious, charitable, or educational purposes exempt sa real property tax. Ano naman yung income tax exemption? Ito naman ay for educational purposes. Educational purposes. Hindi kasama yung, yung dalawa, no? Kasi supposedly, wala ka namang income sa religious charitable purposes, di ba? Sa educational purposes, pwede ka magkakon ng income. Ngayon, sabi ng constitution, ay exempted din yan. All revenues and assets of non-stock, non-profit educational institution used actually, directly, and exclusively for educational purposes shall be exempt from taxes and duties. So sabi ng Supreme Court, ay yan ay income tax exemption. But the income tax exemption applies only to a non-stock, non-profit, educational institution. Kaya kung makikita nyo dito sa baba, yung application ng, ng constitutional provision na yan, ito nangyari. Kapag non-stock, non-profit, like, anong example ng non-stock, non-profit? Lasal. Kasi na-explain ito sa Lasal case Answer, di ba mahal ang tuition doon? Ay, basta non-stock, non-profit yun. Yun ang pinag-uusapan natin. Kahit may Starbucks doon sa loob doon. Non-stock, non-profit. Exempt ang alin? Ang tuition and even the rental income. <laughs> Sir, yung rental income? Eh, yung rental income, paano yun may exempt? Basta yung rental income ay ginamit actually directly and exclusively for educational purposes exempt from income tax third question yung school building exempt din yun sa real property tax yes kasi sabi dito real property used actually directly and exclusively for educational purposes exempt from real property tax how about yung um, building for lease, yung commercial space na may coffee shop, yun po ba ay exempt from real property tax? No! Kasi yung coffee shop ay hindi naman ginagamit sa educational purposes. Sir, ginagawang labor kayo kasi doon nag-aaral yung mga sasadyante. Hindi pa rin. Commercial space pa rin yun. Hindi yung ginagamit sa religious kahit madaming nagdadasal doon, charitable, or educational purposes kahit madami nag-aaral doon. Hindi yun actually, directly, and exclusively used for religious, charitable, or really, ay, educational purposes. Ano yung nangyari? Ibig sabihin, hindi siya exempt sa real property tax. 
So magbabayad ang Lasal ng RPT with respect to that particular commercial space. Pero, yung rental income, pag ginamit ng Lasal sa actually directly and exclusively for educational purposes, then, exempt sa income tax. Alright. Nalinaw yan ang Supreme Court sa case ng Lasal versus BIR. Sir, yung PUP. Ang PUP ay hindi non-stock non-profit educational institution. PUP is a state university. State U tayo eh. State U. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Exempt ba tayo? Yung PUP, exempt din ba? Exempt din. Pero hindi dahil sa constitution. Exempt dahil sa tax code. Sabi sa tax code, section 30, paragraph I, exempt yung government educational institution. So, exempt pero iba yung basis. So, paano yung mga private educational institution? Kasi ang exempt under the, the constitution ay non-stock non-profit. So, kung ikaw ay naging stock and for profit educational institution, subject ka na sa income tax. Pero yung tax rate mo ay 10% of the taxable income. Okay? Exemption on donations, actually directly and exclusively for educational purposes, shall be exempt. Pero hindi lahat. No, subject sa conditions prescribed by law. Okay, isa ka na natin pag yung conditions na yun, pag nasa donor's tax na time. Tax exemption. No law granting any tax exemption shall be passed without the concurrence of a majority of all the members of the Congress. Kasama dyan yung amnesties, condonations, and refunds. Diba? Nababalitaan nyo ba? Amnesty and amnesty sa estate tax involves majority of all members voting separately. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Yung Senate, bumoto sila. And then yung House of Representatives, bumoto rin sila. Separately. Relatively majority is sufficient to withdraw exemption. Relatively majority or the majority of the quorum or the simple majority or the double majority rule. Ano pa yung ibang constitutional limitations na indirectly affecting taxation? We have the due process, equal protection, religious freedom, and non-impairment of obligations and contracts. Due process. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of the laws. Ano natin magagamit yan? And yung due process na yan. Ito yung elements ng due process. Ah, mula dito sa sentence na yan. Ito yung elements ng due process. So, kung wala yan, any, ah, kung may nawala dyan sa apat na yan, yung tax law ay magiging void. Void yung tax law. Therefore, the imposition is also void. Adi wala kang utang na tax. Kaya na yung elements ng due process. The tax is for a public purpose. So kung yung tax ay for private purpose, para sa sariling kapakanan ng mga mababatas, hindi naman ganun siyempre. Example lang. Then the tax is void. Okay? Huwag kang magbayad ng tax. The whole on uniformity of taxation is observed. So kung merong, kung yan ay na-violate yung uniformity of taxation, kasi dapat all subjects and objects similarly situated should be treated equal. Kung na-violate yun, then the tax law will become invalid. Next, either the person or property taxes is within the jurisdiction of the government levying the tax. Kasi nga, mayroon tayong territorial application. Hindi mo naman kasi yan may enforce outside your jurisdiction. And lastly, in the assessment and collection of certain kinds of taxes, notice and opportunity for hearing are provided. So ito yung examples ng violation ng due process clause para may idea tayo. If the tax amounts so amounts to confiscation of property. Halimbawa, ang tax na binigay sa atin na nag-impose ng bagong tax. 100% tax rate. 
na violate ang due process? Yes, it amounts to confiscation of property. At sinabi natin, pag kinuha yung property mo, dapat may just compensation based on the power of eminent domain. Sir, kanina, nabanggit mo, pag 100%, parang pwede pumasok sa power of taxation. And the answer is yes. Because characteristics of taxation is unlimited. It could be 100%. Kung wala pa tayong constitution. Pero dahil nga, ang pinag-uusapan natin ay constitutional limitation. Ayan na, di ba? Noong 1987, inaprove yung constitution. Then, limited na ngayon yung power of taxation. At one limitation ay hindi ka pwedeng mangumpiska ng property. Otherwise, the confiscation, the tax law, the imposition, the collection will be void. Next, if the subject of confiscation is outside the jurisdiction of the taxing authority. Malinaw naman yan. Outside, nasa labas eh. Wala kang power over that subject. If the tax is imposed for a purpose other than a public purpose. Ano ba yung other than a public purpose? E di yun ay private purpose. Para sa sariling bulsa. Bawal yun. If the law which is applied retroactively imposes just and oppressive taxes. Alam mo, 2023 na. Eh yung bagong batas, tinataksan yung activity mo nung 2010. With penalties and surcharge. <laughs> Grabe namang application yun. Tagal na. So void yung law na yun. If the law violates the inherent limitations on taxation. Ano naman yung equal protection? na limitation sa constitution. All persons subject to legislation shall be treated alike under similar circumstances and conditions both in privileges conferred and liabilities imposed. So the equal protection clause is subject to reasonable classification. What are the requisites for valid classification? It must be based on substantial distinctions which make real differences. Halimbawa, may sa corporation ngayon, may imposition na 20% at 25% na corporate income tax. Yung tax rate magkaiba. 20 o kaya 25. 20, dun sa mga maliliit na businesses. 25, dun sa mga malalaking businesses o may malalaking income. So yun, valid ba yun? Yes, because there's a substantial distinction dun sa net income ng 20% at dun sa net income or total assets na gumagamit ng 25%. So the classification is valid because there is substantial distinction. Pero kung piso lang yung distinction na yun, aba, <laughs> baka invalid yung law. Pero in our case, valid. Next, the classification must be germane to the purpose of the law. The classification must not be limited to existing conditions only, but must also apply to future conditions substantially in identical to those of the present. So, dito lang sa law na yun, bawal, bawal mo lang sabihin dun sa imposition ng law na applicable lang siya sa specific condition. Dapat applicable din sa future conditions. The classification must apply equally to all members of the same class. May isang ano dyan, nagreklamo, isang taxpayer, nagreklamo. Kasi nung nag-impose ng tax law, uh, uh, local tax law lang naman yun. Siya lang yung nataksan, siya lang yung na nasubject sa tax. Ba't siya lang? Eh kasi siya pa lang yung nasa industry na yun. Okay. Ay, sabi ng, ng court, valid yung tax law. Kasi pag binasa mo yung tax law, it applies to all members. Nagkataon, ikaw pa lang yung member. <laughs> ikaw yung pioneer. And it also applies to future conditions. So kung may new member, o subject din yung new member na yun sa same tax na yun. Religious freedom, the constitutional guarantee of the free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship carries with it the right 
to disseminate religious information. So activities simply and purely for propagation of faith are exempt. Take note, no? income of religious organizations from any activity conducted for profit or from any of their property, real or personal, regardless of disposition of such income, is taxable. Halimbawa, eh, kasi normal to. Uh, hindi ko lang alam kung familiar kayo kung anong church yan. Mayroong malaking investment. Diba kasi nag may tithes and offering. So saan nila ilalagay yun? Hindi naman sila araw-araw nagpapatayo ng simbahan. Nag-invest sila. No, sila pa yung nga may malalaking investment. Eh. So yung investment na yun, may interest income. So bank deposit. No? Mayroong dividends kung nailagay nila yun sa mga corporations. Yun ba ay taxable? And the answer is yes. Sinabi dito. No? Income ng religious organizations from from any activity conducted for profit taxable now regardless of this position now may dalili may dalili to kasi dito sa regardless of this position ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay yung religious organization or even charitable organization yung income nila taxable regardless of this position isa lang yung tinitingnan natin yung disposition para maging exempt. And that is non-stock, non-profit, educational institution. Pag may income yan, tingnan mo yung disposition niya. Pag yun ay actually directly and exclusively used for educational purposes, educational purposes, then subject, hindi siya subject sa income tax. Exempt siya sa income tax. Pero yung religious organization, charitable institution, pag nagkaroon ng income yan, regardless of this position, taxable. Ano naman itong non-impairment clause? No law impairing the obligation of contract shall be passed. A law which changes the terms of the contract by making new conditions or changing those in the contract or dispenses with those express impairs the obligation. Ngayon, ito, itong non-impairment clause, kaya siya sinama natin sa limitation, sa constitutional limitations, pero indirectly affecting taxation. Dahil dito sa revocation of tax exemption. Anong meron sa revocation of tax exemption? Yung tax exemption kasi could be unilaterally granted or bilaterally agreed upon. Bilaterally agreed upon, meaning, Yung state and the taxpayer, meron silang agreement. Okay? So, yung number one, tsaka yung number three, ito mapapansin nyo, yan ay granted by the state, walang agreement sa private person, hence, could be withdrawn without any violation. Okay? Yung exemption sa number one, unilaterally granted, and the same may be withdrawn by virtue of another law. Sa number three, franchise naman. Um, malaking topic yung naging franchise, di ba? It could be revoked because a franchise is subject to amendment, alteration, or repeal by Congress. Di ba? Issue yan, di ba? Yung hindi na nga na yung franchise. Lahat yan within the power of the Congress. Yung sa number two, Yung bilaterally agreed upon, ano meron dyan? Nag-uusap yung taxpayer eh, tsaka yung government. Hence, it cannot be withdrawn without consent. Otherwise, ma-violate yung constitutional provision na non-impairment laws. No law impairing the obligation of contract shall be passed. So if the tax exemption is based on agreement, then it cannot be withdrawn unilaterally without impairing the contract. So pag winidraw yan, so nagpasa ng law, withdrawing the exemption na bilaterally agreed upon, what will happen? The new law or the law withdrawing the exemption will be considered void. Alright. Legislation of tax laws 
Paano ba na religious state yan? It is similar to another law. May preparation ng bill, may first reading. Then, sa first reading kasi yung title lang. After ng title, ipapasa sa committee. So, andyan na makikita niyo yung mga informational material, may pubcon, may mga surveys. Then, pupunta sa second reading, may nabasa na yung yung buong body, magpo-propose ng amendment. After noon, pupunta na sa third reading, which is the final reading. Tinitingnan lang kung tama yung edits. Next noon, a transmittal of the approved bill to the Senate. But transmittal to the Senate. Kasi yung tax law, yan ay manggagaling sa House of Representatives. Yung tax law manggagaling sa House of Representatives. So from the House of Representatives, pag natapos na yung third reading, submit na nila sa Senate. Same process yung sa Senate, no? Babasahin nila first, second, third. No? Daming basa niyan. Then Senate action on the approved bill of the House. Pag may difference, pag may binago yung Senate, pupunta sa conference committee. Mag-usap sila. Pag wala namang binago, ay di approved na yun. Per Permahan na lang. Pipirma si Senate President. Pipirma yung Speaker of the House. Enrolled bill na ang tawag doon. Then itatranspit na yung bill, the enrolled bill, to the President. So may action yung President. Yung President, pwede niyang i-approve yung bill, permahan niya. Pwede niyang i-veto. No, tanggihan niya, reject niya. Pero yung veto, syempre, pinapadala yon sa kung saan nag-originate yung bill na yon. Or pwede naman wala siyang gawin. Kasi after 30 days, automatic magiging batas yung bill na pinasa sa kanya. So sa veto, tandaan nyo, pag nag-veto ang president ng tax law, allowed ang line item veto. Next. Sa legislation of tax law, ang scope ng power ng Congress ay unlimited din. Kasi siya yung magdetermine ng subject, which could be person, property, occupation, exercise, or privileges to be tax. Method of collection siya rin. Paano ba yung method of collection? Pwedeng final tax, pwedeng withholding tax. A purpose for which the tax shall be levied, apportionment of tax, tax rate, kind of tax, donor's tax ba yan, estate tax ba yan, income tax, bahala siya, and situs of taxation. So again, namanggit natin kanina, yung appropriation, revenue, or tariff bills, lahat yan ay mag-originate exclusively in the House of Representatives. Then after ng House, sa third reading, ipapasa sa Senate. So yung Senate naman, same process. First, second, third reading. So pwede siya mag-propose ng papalitan. Pag nag-propose siya, pupunta ka sa conference committee. Pag naman wala kang proposal, pwede yun. Diretso na. No? Permahan yun na. <laughs> Stages or aspects of taxation, we have the Legislative Act, the Executive Act, the Taxpayers Act, and the Refund. Levy, it refers to the enactment of the tax laws or the statutes. Yan yung levy, the Legislative Act. Yung legislation process na nabanggit natin kanina. Assessment and collection, oh, eto na yung trabaho ng BIR. Assessment and collection. So, i-compute nyo na yung tax nyo. Yan. Bayar ng bahala dyan. Siyempre, sa atin kasi, self-declaration eh. Ikaw magde-declare ng tax mo, di ba? Ikaw magde-declare ng income, ng expense mo, at ng tax mo. Subject to audit ng BIR. Payment, the taxpayer will pay. Eh, napasobra yung bayan. Refund. A claim for refund must first be filed with the Commissioner of Internal Revenue within two years from the date of payment of the tax. 
requisites of a valid tax. Baka may kinalaman dito dun sa requisites of a taxation or elements of taxation. Pero sa mga napagkakala natin, na-discuss natin, refers yan sa taxation. Now, ano naman yung may kinalaman sa tax? Kasi ang bunga ng taxation ay yung tax. Ang ini-impose ng taxation, ang tawag doon ay tax. So, ano ba yung tax? Requisites of a valid tax for a public purpose. Familiar? Yes, kasi yan yung sa due process. Rule of taxation should be uniform. The personal property tax is within the jurisdiction of the taxing authority. Assessment and collection is in consonance with the due process clause. And the tax must not infringe on the inherent and constitutional limitations of the power of taxation. Essential characteristics of tax. Kanina, nabagit natin yung characteristics of taxation na CAPS. Ito naman, essential characteristics of the tax. Tax is an enforced contribution, generally payable in money, proportionate in character, levied on person's property or the exercise of a right or privilege, levied by the state which has jurisdiction over the subject or the object of taxation, levied by the Congress, the lawmaking body of the state, and levied for public purpose or purposes. Ano naman yung mga kinds of taxes? At ang papag-ahalan kasi natin this semester is income tax. Income tax. Pero madami pang klase ng tax. No? And then, pwede pa natin silang maklasify as to the object, burden, amount, purpose, authority, and graduation. Malapit na kayo kumadwi. Second year pa. <laughs> As to the object, we have the personal poll or capitation tax. Ano ba yung poll, uh, personal poll or capitation tax? Ang object nito ay person. Example, community tax. Okay, wala kinalaman sa property or occupation. Basta impose lang sa tao. Mayroon din tax na impose sa property. Ang example niyan ay real property tax. At impose naman sa privilege or excise. This is imposed upon performance of an act, enjoyment or privilege or engaging in occupation, profession or business. Ay nasan yung income tax? Ang income tax ay anong income tax? Person, property, or privilege. Ang income tax ay nasa privilege or excise tax. Kasi ang tinatak sa atin ay your privilege or your right to earn income. Yan. Now, as to the burden, we have direct taxes and indirect taxes. Direct taxes, ang titignan natin dito ay yung burden. Who shoulders the burden? Kasi ang dalawa yan eh. The tax code will impose the tax to a certain person. Can that person pass the tax, pass the burden to another person? Kung pwede niyang ipasa yung burden, like value-added tax, na pwede mong kolektahin from the customer, that is indirect tax. Pero kung hindi mo pwedeng ipasa yung tax na yon to another person, like income tax, estate tax, oh, syempre, namatay yung tao, alam, ipasa mo yung tax sa ibang tao, donor's tax, ikaw yung nag-donate, ikaw magbigay ng tax sa government. So tax which are demanded, taxes which are demanded from persons who also shoulder them, taxes for which a taxpayer is directly or primarily liable or which he cannot shift to another. We call that direct tax. So, dalawa yan, no? Demanded from the person and the burden. So, yun yung incidence of taxation. Sino yung person na liable? Na pag-remit kay BIR? At sino yung person na, na nag-shoulder ng burden? So, kung yan ay nasa isang tao lang, 
direct tax ang tawag natin dyan. Income tax. Example niya. Indirect tax, taxes which can be shifted. Ito yung demanded from one person in the expectation and intention that he can shift the burden to someone else. Like value added tax. Okay, as to the amount, we have the specific tax. Fixed amount imposed by the head or number or by some standard of weight or measurement. Anong isa? Ad valorem. Ad valorem, uh, value yan. No? Yung valorem means value. Kaya may value din dun sa definition niya. A tax of a fixed proportion of the value of the property with respect to the, which the tax is assessed. Dun sa specific, mayroon kang fixed amount. A specific amount. <laughs> Eh na bahala diyan. Ad valorem value, no? Valorem value. As to purpose. So sinabi natin yung purpose niya pwedeng general or specific. Pero pag specific purpose, yung tax na yon, dun lang sa purpose na yon pwedeng gamitin. General means levied for the general or ordinary purposes of the government. A special regulatory sanctuary tax Levied for special purpose. So, ito, non-revenue. Pero, ginagamit kasi dito yung police power of the state. No, kambal ang tax at police power of the state dito sa special regulatory or sanctuary purpose ng taxation. As to authority, sino nag-impose? National government and local government. Kaya meron tayong national tax and local tax. Ngayon, sa national tax, ano na ba yung mga national tax? Income tax, na pagkakala natin. Estate and donors taxes, value-added tax, other percentage tax, excise tax, documentary stamp tax, and such other tax. So meron kang income. Income tax ay imposed by the national government. So lahat ng makikita mo sa National Internal Revenue Code, lahat yun ay imposed by the national government. Local tax imposed naman ng local governments like uh, business tax. Yan yung binabayaran mo para makuha mo yung mayor's permit. You have the professional tax, amusement tax, community tax, franchise tax, real property tax, other taxes, fees, and charges. As to graduation, we have progressive. Ano yung progressive? Ito yung example. No? Tignan mo, tumataas yung rates. From 20 to 35. Progressive. Ano naman yung isa? Regressive. Example. Wala sa Pilipinas niyan. Eh. Pero baligtarin natin. Halimbawa, yung 20 to 35. Baligtarin mo. From 35 to 20. Ang tawag doon ay regressive. And proportionate, we have a fixed percentage like value-added tax, meron kang 12%. So fixed percentage, proportionate. Degressive, a fixed rate is imposed on certain amount and diminishes gradually on sums below it. The tax rate in this case is arbitrary because the increase in tax rate is not proportionate to the increase of the tax base. Kaya nga degressive. May kinalaman naman sa amounts. Okay. Now let's talk about the general concepts in taxation. General concepts in taxation. Prospectivity of tax loss. Imprescriptibility. Situs of taxation. Double taxation. Escape from taxation. Doctrine of Equitable Recoupment and Taxpayer Suit. Perspectivity. So kung may bagong tax law ngayon, example, pwede bang maging effective yan last year? <laughs> pwede ba yan? Pwede, no? Ikala ko po ba perspectivity? <laughs> That is the general rule. No? Pag yung tax law, silent, 
then, kung kailan siya naging effective, doon mag-start yung application ng bagong tax rates, for example. Pero pag sinabi ng law, kung kailan magiging effective yung uh, tax rates and the tax imposition, disusundin natin kung ano sinabi ng batas. So, tax laws may be applied retroactively provided it is expressly declared or it is clearly the legislative intent. Ang example natin dyan ay yung create law. Yung create law, effective yung yung 20% niya, rate niya, or 25%, nang galing yun sa 30%, eh, binabahan nila. No? So yan ay effective ng July 1, 2020. Pero kailan naging effective yung create law? Yung create law naging effective noong April 2021. Pero naging retroactive yung effect with respect to the corporate income tax na 20 or 25%. So, retroactive. And assuming silent yung law about, about, the, about the 20 or 25%. So, kung silent yung law, then kung kailan naging effective yung tax law, dun pala mag apply yung bagong rates ng corporation. Pero dahil sinabi na mismo ng tax law kung kailan mag-apply, then susundin na lang natin kung kailan yung kanyang application. Exception, when retroactive application would be so harsh and oppressive. So, sir, bakit itong 20 and 25% pinayagan na retroactive? Eh kasi, beneficial sa ating mga taxpayers. Pero kung yan ay harsh and oppressive, hindi yan papayagan ng court. Imprescriptibility. Taxes are imprescriptible. That is the general rule. Imprescriptible. Pero sir, may, nala- may nakita kami na mga nagpe-prescribe daw. 3 years, 10 years, and 5 years. When the law provides for the prescription, eh di prescribe. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng prescription? Gamot ba yan? Ah, hindi naman. Prescription, hindi ka na pwedeng singilin. No? Kasi nag-prescribe na. Tapos na ang period of assessment. So kung may, may konting kulang ka doon, sa tax return na nagawa mo, nagkamali ka ng konti lang, hindi sinasadya. Hindi ka na pwedeng singilin doon sa kulang na yon. Okay? For period of 3 years. Prescribed na. Hindi na pwedeng singilin. So, ang prescription natin ay 3 years from what date? 3 years from the prescribed last day of filing. That is April 15, di ba? Sa annual. Or the day when the return was actually filed, whichever comes earlier. Ito, if filed later than the last day of filing. Hindi to earlier. Ito, later to later. Whichever comes later. Ito natin. So, halimbawa, nag-file ka ng April 15. Then, the prescription, prescriptive period ng 3 years ay April 15. Paano kung nag-file ka ng maaga, no? January. Aba, early bird. Ang prescriptive period, kailan mag April 15 pa rin. So, walang paagahan dito. Mag-file ka lang ng April 15. Ano naman yung actually filed? Eh, sabi sir, may actually filed. Kung na-late ka ng filing, halimbawa, nag-file ka ng July 1, then the prescriptive period will run from July 1. So, date of filing or the prescribed date of filing, whichever comes later. 10 years naman kung fraudulent yung return. No? Fraudulent yung return. 
10 years from the discovery. So, in effect, ano nangyari? No? Imposcriptible. Sasabihin lang ng BIR, kaka-discover lang namin. 5 years naman, prescription of collection. No, na-assess ka, then, uh, pag after ng assessment, after final na yung assessment, sinabi ng BIR, ito na utang mo, collection nyo naman sunod doon, babayakan mo naman. So, the BIR has 5 years to collect. After ng 5 years, hindi pa rin nang mamalik yung BIR, then prescribe ang period ng collection. Hindi ka na pwedeng, hindi na pwedeng mamalik ang BIR. Next, situs means the place. Uh, situs of taxation means the place of taxation. Saan ba pwedeng, uh, saan, saan ba tamang situs ng taxation? So within the territorial jurisdiction, the taxing authority may determine the situs. Dahil income tax yung pinapagkakala natin ngayon, ano ba yung situs ng income tax or the place of taxation of income tax? Eto, no? kung mapapansin nyo, lahat ng taxpayer classify based on citizenship and residency or residence. Filipino alien or resident and non-resident. So, ang situs ng income tax sa lahat ng taxpayer, income received or derived from within. Within what? Within the Philippines. Lahat yan ay taxable in the Philippines. Okay? Isa lang, isa lang yung bayani. <laughs> yung resident citizen. Yung resident citizen, taxable siya on all income derived from sources within and without. So yan yung situs of income tax. Double taxation means taxing twice the same taxpayer for the same tax period upon the same thing or activity when it should be taxed once for the same purpose and with the same kind of character of tax. Mayroon tayong dalawang klase ng double taxation. We have direct and indirect. Pag sinabi natin indirect, all elements are present. No, both taxes must be imposed on the same property or subject matter, same purpose, same taxing authority, same territory, same taxing period, and same kind or character of tax. Double a direct double taxation. Extreme example, subject ka sa income tax, sinabject ka ulit sa income tax. Okay? Eh, dalawa yun. No? Eh, kaya nga, direct double tax. Ano yung indirect? Alisin mo yung isang element dito sa listahan, ang tawag natin doon ay indirect. Kahit anong element, no? Alisin mo. Indirect double taxation na yun. This is uh, double taxation in the broad sense. Or there is indirect du duplicate taxation if any of the elements of direct duplicate taxation is absent. So, nung gagawin natin sa double taxation, yan po ba ay pinagbabawal ng constitution? Walang nakasulat. Kung hindi nakalagay sa constitution, nabawal. Kaya ang sinasabi natin, yung double taxation, bawal. Kasi kung babasahin mo yung constitution, Bawal yung mga oppressive na tax. Eh yung double taxation, oppressive and confiscatory. Kasi nga, nasubject ka na sa tax, not just once, but twice. Okay? The Constitution does not prohibit double taxation. However, double taxation will not be allowed if it results in violation of the Equal Protection Clause. So in effect, Double taxation, hindi prohibited sa constitution. Pero pag hinimay natin, the direct double taxation 
is against the Constitution. Why? Because it will violate equal protection clause and the indirect indirect double taxation is not prohibited. Modes of eliminating double taxation, allowing reciprocal exemption, either by law or treaty, allowance of tax credit for foreign taxes paid, allowance of deductions such as for foreign taxes paid and vanishing deductions in essay tax, or reduction of the Philippine tax rate. So medyo wala pang masyadong idea. No? Ano, ano po ba yung apat na yun? <laughs> Yan yung modes of eliminating double taxation at mapapag-aralan natin yung mga yan. No? Masas makikita natin, ah, okay. In-eliminate sila ng double tax. So, balikan na lang natin ulit yan kapag nadaanan natin sa topic. Para may reference tayo, no? Ano ba? Dumating tayo dun sa reciprocal exemption. Oh, guys, di ba? Yan kasi ay isang way para ma-eliminate yung double taxation. Ayan. Next. Wala naman daw double taxation sa following cases na to. Akala mo lang meron. Taxing corporate income and taxing the dividends from the same corporation. Iba yung corporate income dun sa dividends declared. Income yun ng stockholder. So magkaiba. Tax imposed by the state and the local government upon the same occupation, calling, or activity. Paras lang, no? Same eh. Same occupation, calling, or activity. Pero, hindi daw double taxation kasi magkaiba yung taxing authority. Real estate tax and income tax collected on the same real estate property list for earning purposes. Dalawang taxes lang yun. Real property tax, yung isa. Income tax, yung isa. Pares tax yun. Pero hindi daw yun direct double taxation kasi nga, iba yung kind or character of the tax. Taxes are imposed on taxpayers' final product and the storage of raw materials used in the production of the final product. Iba rin yung character ng tax. Escape from taxation, we have capitalization, transformation, shifting, avoidance, evasion, exemption, amnesty. So lahat ng yan ay allowed naman except dun sa evasion. So ano na ba itong mga to? Focus tayo dito sa tax exemption, avoidance, evasion. May amnesty pa nga yan eh. Amnesty partakes of an absolute forgiveness or waiver by the government. So may utang ka na, kaya ka niya pinatawad. Amnesty. Tax exemption is grant of immunity to particular person. So at the first place, hindi ka na niya sinisingil. Tax avoidance is legal. Ah, mababa yung tax mo kasi gumamit ka ng mga tax avoidance scheme or tax saving scheme. Ano naman yung tax evasion? Illegal. It is the use by the taxpayer of illegal or fraudulent means to defeat or lessen the payment of a tax. Yan ay illegal. Granted by law yung amnesty and exemption, outcome of tax planning, kumuha kayo ng magaling na abogado para mababayaran na tax legally, tax avoidance yun. Pero kung mayroong fraud, tinatago yung income, tinataasan yung expenses, bala kayo dyan, no? Kulong kayo dyan. Tax evasion yan. Tax amnesty versus tax exemption. Ang benefit ng tax amnesty is immunity from the civil, criminal, administrative liability arising from the non-payment of taxes. Sa tax exemption naman, immunity from the civil liability. Anong coverage ng amnesty? past tax liability. So, meron ng tax liability. Coverage ng exemption, yung future tax liability, hindi na niya sinisingil agad. So, sa amnesty, merong actual loss ng revenue. Kasi, in, ano na yan eh, accrued tax na yan eh. Hindi lang pinabayaran. Sa tax exemption, walang actual revenue loss kasi at the first place, wala ka namang revenue. Wala ng liability ng tax. Difference ng avoidance and evasion. 
Tax avoidance, meaning also called minimization. Evasion means dodging. Tax evasion is legal outcome of tax planning. Evasion is illegal outcome of tax fraud. Tax avoidance is not punishable, but tax evasion is punishable. Pwede ka makulong dyan. The purpose of avoidance is, merely, is to merely minimize payment of tax, pero yung evasion, umilag, hindi na nagbayad ng tax. Elements of evasion, the end to be achieved, the evil mind, and a course of action which is unlawful. Evidence of evasion, kailangan mayroon ka bang direct evidence? Hindi naman. Pwede kasing circumstantial evidence. So ano ba yung example natin ng circumstantial evidence? Um, the sa first bullet, two consecutive years. Uh, two consecutive years. Hindi ka nag-declare ng tamang income for two consecutive years. Ibig sabihin, mayroong fraud. Okay. Ayan na. Element ng evasion. Eh. Tax evasion, yung fraud. Or, substantial under-declaration. For four consecutive years. Substantial under declaration of income. Anong ibig sabihin natin ng substantial under declaration? Uh, o kaya naman, intentional overstatement of deduction. Ano yung substantial? So substantial yan kapag 30% ay hindi mo declare na income o overstated ang expense by 30%. Yan ang golden number, no? 30%. Ibig sabihin niyan, meron ng fraud. What is the doctrine of equitable recoupment? Ito naman kasi yung refund. No? Sa refund, kailangan makapag-apply ka ng refund within two years. From the reckoning period. Eh, hindi ka nakapag-apply. Masyado kang mayaman siguro. Bayad ka na bayad ng tax. Ayan. Nag-prescribe. Hindi ka na makapag-refund. So, pwede mo bang gamitin yung refundable amount mo supposedly as tax credit? Sabi mo, may advance payment ako dyan eh. <laughs> hindi ko na nakuha. Mabawal yun. No? Hindi yun applicable sa atin. The doctrine of equitable recoupment. Kung hindi mo na-refund yun, ah, wala na yun. Sa government na yun. Hindi mo pwedeng i-claim yun as deductions or tax credit. So, hindi mababawasan ang yung liability. Ano naman tong taxpayer suit? Refers to a case where the act complaint of directly involves the illegal disbursement of public funds derived from taxation. Requisites are locus standi, doctrine of transcendental importance, and ripeness for judicial determination. How do we interpret tax loss? Pag sinabi natin how do we interpret tax loss, um, syempre may ano yan, di ba? Dalawang interpretation. Isang in favor of the taxpayer isang in favor of the government. Lagi ganun yan eh. Interpretation of the tax loss. Yeah, the first rule is, kung clear, malinaw, walang doubt, edi walang interpretation. Yeah? It will be applied in its literal import. Eh, malinaw pala eh. Now, kung malabo, yan na, di ba? Kanya-kanyang interpretation yan. Yung malinaw nga, pinapalabo pa minsan eh. Kung malabo, mayroon ka dalawang interpretations. Now, how do we interpret the tax law? Ang sabi ng Supreme Court, liberally in favor of the taxpayer. Ang example dyan, um, vague. Halimbawa yung tax law. Hindi mo alam kung taxable ka o hindi. May sinabi dito, ano ba to? May coma. Oh. Taxable ba ako o hindi ako taxable dahil sa coma? 
Ikukunin mo yung liberal interpretation. So, kung pwedeng ma-interpret yan na hindi ka taxable, then that is the proper interpretation. Okay? That is the interpretation of tax laws. And iba yung interpretation of tax exemption. Because, sabi natin, taxation is the rule, exemption is the exemption. Pag exemption naman, this is disfavored dyan, ha? not favored. Kaya ang interpretation natin dyan, meron yung dalawang interpretation, ang pipikapin mong interpretation ay estrixissime juris against the taxpayer. Strictly, no? by law, against the taxpayer. Kung tanong dyan, exempt ka ba o hindi ka exempt? Ano yung interpretation? Hindi ka exempt. <laughs> So dito, subject ka ba sa tax o hindi ka subject sa tax? Anong interpretation? Hindi ka subject sa tax. Ha? Kung may ganong interpretation kung malabo. Pero kung exemption na, ibig sabihin yan, subject ka na sa tax. Ang tanong lang, exempted ka ba or hindi? Ay, hindi ka exempted. Yan ang interpretation. Okay? First is in favor. The next is is strictly against the taxpayer. Exception, when the law itself expressly provides for liberal construction, when the exemption is in favor of the government itself or if agencies because the general rule is that they are exempt from tax, when the exemption refers to religious, charitable, and educational institutions, kasi yun ang intent ng constitution natin, when there is an express mention or when the taxpayer falls within the purview of the exemption by clear legislative intent. Now, how do we interpret tax rules and regulations? Ano ba yung tax rules and regulations? May makikita ba, may mapapansin kayo. Halimbawa, the BIR issued revenue regulation. Oh, yun, yun na yun. Yung RR number, yan. Revenue regulation, adi yun na yun. No? That, is, that is the rules and regulations ng tax code, yung ini-issue ng uh, Department of Finance upon the recommendation of the BIR. The rules and regulation. Ngayon, nung binasa mo yung rules and regulation, ay nalabuan ka. <laughs> So how do you interpret that? I think ganun din. You will apply interpretation of tax loss, tax loss in favor of the taxpayer and kung exemption naman, against the taxpayer. Ngayon, ang tanong dito, e effective ba yung interpretation na issued ng BIR? And the answer is yes. Uh, the constructions placed by the office charged with the implementing and enforcing the provisions of the NIRC should be given controlling weight unless such interpretation is clearly erroneous. So pag may sinabi si BIR, the revenue regulations, yung interpretation na yun must be respected. Uh, susundin natin. No? It will form part of the, of the law of the land Part yan ang law unless mapavoid no, ng some taxpayers. So should be given controlling weight. Interpretation of penal provisions is strict construction. Parang may, may kasalanan ka ba o wala? O wala kang kasalanan. <laughs> yan ang interpretation natin sa penal provisions. Kung malabo ha. Okay, now, check naman natin yung uh, taxing authority natin. Sa BIR, yun ang ulit ta sa atin, ang ulit. The Bureau of Internal Revenue shall be under the supervision and control of the Department of Finance. So the BIR, meron siyang chief commissioner. At yung chief commissioner, meron siyang apat na assistant chiefs known as the deputy commissioners. So ganito ang itsura niya. Kung gusto niyo pumasok sa BIR, oh, check niyo saan niyo gusto diyan, no? Sa RDO, sa Regional Office. Do ka ba sa Office of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue? Yeah. <laughs> Nagpa-appoint 
So mayroon kang isang uh, commissioner and then mayroon kang apat na deputy commissioner. Sino-sino ba sila? Si Romeo D. Lumagi Jr., siya yung commissioner of internal revenue ngayon. And then mayroon kang apat na deputy commissioner, operations group, legal group, deputy commissioner ng information systems group, and resource management group. All right. So ano ba yung powers ng BIR Commissioner? Madami, no? Sa tax code. Sa so, section 4, section 4 pa lang, makikita na natin na yung Commissioner, mayroon siyang power to interpret tax laws. O, yun. Mayroon siyang power to interpret tax laws. Kaya nga yung kanyang interpretation via rules and regulation, yun ay bibigyan ng controlling weight. So si Commissioner, mayroon siyang power to interpret tax laws and to decide tax cases. The power of the Commissioner to obtain information, to summon, examine, and take testimony of person. Mayroon din siyang power to make assessments and prescribe additional requirements for tax administration and enforcement. So number four, mayroon siyang authority to delegate power. Check natin later yan. No? Alam naman, lahat pa pwede mong i-delegate. So, yung delegate mo yung magtatrabaho, ikaw hindi. Pwede mong gano'n. <laughs> Number five, assignment of internal revenue officers and other employees to other duties. Power to apply accounting period, allocation of income and deductions. Power the commissioner to suspend the business operations of a taxpayer. So, makikita nyo yung ibang nakakandado. That's the Oplan Candado. Tapos may nakalagay doon, hindi nagbayad ng buwis. Yan. Authority of the commissioner to compromise, abate, and refund or credit taxes. Power to file civil and criminal actions. So this is a delegation. Kanina mo pwedeng i-delegate? Sabi dito, to any yan, or such subordinate officials with a rank equivalent to division chief or higher. Ano yung hindi mo pwedeng i-delegate? The power to recommend the promulgation of rules and regulations by the Secretary of Finance. So kung mapapansin nyo, lahat ng revenue regulations may pirma ng BIR Commissioner bago i-issue ah, ng Secretary of Finance. The power to issue rulings of first impression and the power to compromise or abate, the power to assign or reassign internal revenue officers. So nabanggit natin yung Secretary of Finance kasi nga, yung BIR ay under the Department of Finance. So ang merong authority yung Secretary of Finance. The Secretary of Finance upon the recommendation of the Commissioner shall promulgate all needful rules and regulations for the effective enforcement of the provisions of this code. Compliance requirement, any merchant or business organization in whatever form, kailangan mag-comply. Ano ah, comply mo? You register with the BIR. Okay? After mo mag-register sa BIR, ipa-register mo naman yung accounting books. Yung accounting books, ayan. Journal, ledger, cash receipt, cash disbursement, kung nan vat ka. Pero kung vat ka, dagdagan mo ng Sales Journal, Subsidiary Sales Journal, and Subsidiary Purchase Journal. After mong makuha na yung books, pwede mo nang isabay din kasi dun yung pagkuha ng authority to print sales invoice and official receipts. At syempre, magpaprint ka na rin. May authority ka na eh. At hindi lang yun. Pag mayroon kang sale, mag-issue ka ng invoice and official receipts. So, after the the quarter, mayroon ka ng receipts, sales, receipts, and expenses, mag-file ka ng tax returns. Now, dahil nag-file ka ng tax returns, magbayad ka namin ng applicable tax. And possibly, kung ikaw ay nag renta ng office space, may merong applicable withholding taxes on specified payments. Okay? Sa renta, 5%. Withhold mo yung payments. Sa so pag-register sa BIR, magbabayad ka ng registration fee amounting to 500 pesos. And then, minsan kailangan mo pa rin bumili ng 30 pesos na DST. 
Ay, hindi pala minsan. Kailangan mo pala magbayad ng DST na 30 pesos. So, in total, 530. Ito yung itsura ng VAR Certificate of Registration. Um, matagal na to eh. Lumaan na to. Dilaw eh. Ngayon, ang kulay na blue na eh. Ay, green yata yun. Blue-green. Yan. <laughs> So ano makikita mo diyan sa VAR Certificate of Registration, yung TIN. Yan ang kinukuha mo diyan, yung tax payer's identification number. Then yung pangalan ng taxpayer. Then the registration date, your address, the tax type. Ah, malaki yung tax type kasi sa tax type doon mo makikita pati yung uh, deadline. So lahat ng na nakalagay sa tax type mo diyan, dapat makapag-file ka. Pag hindi ka nakapag-file, penalty. No? 1,000 pesos din yun. Laki din eh. Line of business. Okay. Uh, trade name kung meron. And the date of issuance. Tapos yung firma. So ngayon, pwede kang kumuha ng certificate of registration online. Pwede ng email. Pwede sa Aorus, dapat pwede na. Pero hindi pa masyadong kumagana kasi sa akin yung Aorus. Yung online system nila. Pwede rin sa Philippine Business Hub. Dati, kapag sa corporation, nag-apply ka, na to, uh, automatic lumalabas na yung, ano eh, yung unified application. Ando na lahat. Ang ngayon, iba. Lalabas na yung SEC Certificate of Registration mo, then kailangan mo mag-proceed sa Philippine Business Hub para kumuha ng TIN. Or, punta ka na lang sa RDO mo, baka doon ka na magpo-process ng Certificate of Registration. Books of accounts, pwede manual, loose leaf, or computerized books of accounts. Yung manual books of accounts, ayan yung ginamit nyo nung first year kayo, dun sa <laughs> nagsulat kayo ng debit credit, debit credit. Ito yung mga books natin. When audit is required, kapag ang gross sales, earnings, receipts, or output exceed 3 million pesos. Audit. So, kailangan mo na ng mag-hire ng auditor, ng CPA para gumawa siya ng kanyang financial statements. Kasama dyan yung financial statements. Mag-issue siya ng audit opinion. Preservation of accounting books. Um, 10 years. 10 years. Tagal, no? 10 years. Kasi nga, yung prescription pag may fraud, 10 years. So, ganoon din dito, ano? 10 years yung uh, preservation. Ano preservation? Bawal itapon, ha? Bawal itapon. Pwede mo naman gawing digitalized. Digitized. Authority to print. Kailangan kumuha ka agad ito. BIR requires businesses to have authority to print receipts. Kasi kailangan mo to para makapag-print ka ng invoices or receipts. At yung invoices or receipts, kailangan mo naman mag-issue kapag naka, nakapag-render ka ng service or nakatanggap ka ng payment. 